Hello and welcome back. In this video, I'd like to talk to you about a feature of the VPC service known as VPC Flow Logs, which enables you to capture information about IP traffic going into and out of your network interfaces in your VPC. You can use this information for performing various tasks such as diagnosing overly restrictive security group rules. Perhaps there are instances that are not getting the traffic you expect them to be receiving. Monitoring the traffic that is reaching your instances and determining the directions of traffic to and from network interfaces in your VPC. It can also be used to perform security audits so that you can identify any kind of rogue traffic that's entering your network. Let's get started. So here is a typical VPC in the North Virginia region, US East one. Okay, we've got a public subnet and a private subnet and it's got access to the internet gateway. And obviously we may have some instances that we're hosting in our public and private subnets. Now you wanna monitor the type of IP traffic that's entering your VPC and perhaps hitting those instances and whether they are being accepted or rejected. So what you can do is make use of VPC flow logs. Now you can configure VPC flow logs for the entire VPC as a whole, for a specific subnet, or for a specific elastic network interface that is running in your VPC. So in this case, there's a single network interface that's attached to this EC2 instance, and maybe we just wanna monitor the flow logs for that instance, and that's perfectly fine as well. Now, when it comes to actually configuring VPC flow logs, it's really simple. You need a destination to store all of that log flow information. So flow log data can be published to various locations, including CloudWatch logs, Amazon S3, or the Amazon Data Firehose, which was previously known as the Amazon Kinesis Data Fire. The configured delivery path and permissions that enable network traffic logs to be sent to those destinations, like CloudWatch logs and S3, are referred to as subscriptions. After you create the flow log, you can retrieve and view the log records in the log group the bucket or the delivery stream that you have configured. Obviously, when you're configuring flow logs, one thing to bear in mind is that these flow logs need to be able to write to these resources, okay? And obviously by now you're aware that means we need some permissions. So you need to obviously configure the necessary IAM roles for your flow logs so that they have got sufficient permissions to send flow log data to any of those destinations. In terms of actually how you go about setting this up, well, you simply define the resources for which you want to create the flow log. So in this case, maybe it's just that EC2 instance. The type of network traffic that you want to capture, whether it's accepted traffic, rejected traffic, or all traffic, and the destination to which you want to publish that flow log data. Is it to CloudWatch logs? Is it to Amazon S3, etc.? There are various resources you can run in your VPC for which you can capture flow log data information. So all of your load balancers, RDS databases, Elastic Cache nodes, Redshift clusters, workspaces, NAT gateways, and transit gateways as well. Let's take a look at a typical entry in our flow log data. Okay, so you've got this entry over here. So what does this all mean? Well, this single line of data contains a lot of information. So for instance, we know the account ID, which the flow log data is writing about, the Elastic Network Interface ID for which the data is being captured, the source IP address of that IP traffic, the destination IP for that IP traffic, the port number, so this is the destination port number, so this is obviously SSH port 22, the protocol being used, which is six or TCP in this case, and whether or not the IP packet was accepted or rejected. And so this is how you would be able to identify whether there's any particular type of IP traffic that is being accepted and maybe should be rejected or vice versa. Right, that's enough of all of the theory. Let's jump into the AWS Management Console and actually set this up so you can get some hands-on experience. Okay, so here is my AWS account. This is a development account, and I'm currently going to be working in the US East One region. Here, what we're going to do is we're basically going to set up an instance that we're going to set up VPC flow logs for, and then we're going to test and see what type of data we're capturing when we set up that VPC flow logs. So the first thing that you want to do when configuring VPC flow logs, obviously, is to sort out those IAM roles, because obviously we're going to need those IAM roles. So I'm going to go into IAM first. And in the resources section of this video, in our GitHub repository, or in the description box below, you're gonna find a link to the IAM policies that you will need. Let me just quickly bring that up and show you what that looks like. 
Okay, so here we have, we've got a trust policy, okay, and this trust policy is going to allow the role to basically trust the VPC flow logs service. Okay, so when we create an IAM role, you need to define a trust policy to say what are you trusting? Well, we are trusting the VPC flow log service. And then what permissions are we going to give this particular service? Well, we're going to give it access to CloudWatch logs. So it's going to be able to work with a logs group. It's going to be able to put log events, okay? And also describe log groups and describe log streams. So those are the permissions that we're going to give it. So the first thing to do is just make sure you copy the trust policy. So I'm just going to copy that to my clipboard. Navigate back to my management console. Okay, here we are. We go into roles, we'll click create a role, and you wanna click on this one over here that says custom trust policy. Get rid of the template there and just paste in that trust policy. So we're trusting the VPC flow log service. Okay, and scroll down, click next. Now ignore the fact that we're not attaching a permission policy yet because we're gonna create an inline policy shortly. So just click next again, and then let's give this role a name. Okay, something simple like that. VPC flow logs to CloudWatch. Okay, so I'm just going to put that in there. And then, so that is our trust policy. I've not attached any permissions yet. I'll just create the role first. Okay, so the role has been created. We can now search for the role. So there it is. I'll go into the role and now I can attach a permission policy. So click on add permissions and click create an inline policy. Click on the JSON remove the sample policy there and let's just go back to my Visual Studio app and you just want to copy these permissions into that. Okay so there we are so this is now our permissions to be able to write to CloudWatch. Scroll down click next okay and then obviously we need to give it a policy name. So VPC flow logs CW policy, something like that, and click create policy. Okay, so that's our policy created. So we've got an IAM role that is trusting the VPC flow log service and it's giving that service the ability to talk to CloudWatch logs and to be able to write to CloudWatch logs. Okay, so now that is done, we move on to the next stage. So we've got our role in place. So if I just quickly check that again, yep, there it is. Okay, so now we can go and launch an EC2 instance. Okay, so I'm gonna go into the EC2 management console and we're gonna go into instances and we're basically gonna launch an instance. So click launch instance and we'll call this one management server. Okay, something like that. And I'm gonna select the Amazon Linux 2023 AMI. We're gonna go with the T3 Micro or T2 Micro. Any one of those two will do. They're part of free tier. You don't need a key pair to log in. We're gonna be deploying this in the default VPC, which is available in every region. So that's the default VPC there. I'll just put it in US East 1A, just my preference. And we will also update that security group name. We'll call this one VPC Flow Log SG. Okay, just so that I know which security group it is. Uh, in fact, let's also just give it a description, something like that. And we want SSH open on that so that we can connect to it from anywhere. Okay, and if I scroll a bit further down, there's pretty much nothing else to do. So all of that is all set and we'll go ahead and launch the instance. Right, it'll take a couple of minutes for this instance to be fully available. So if I click on instances now, it is in the pending state. So I'm just gonna pause the video over here and come back once it's all done. Okay, so our management server is up and running and the status check has passed. So we know that the server is available. So we can actually connect to the server now. Let's give that a try. So if I click connect, we'll be connecting using the EC2 instance connect service. This is its public IP address. So if I click connect, I should be able to get in without any issues. Let's take a look. Okay, great. So I can do a sudo su and I can ping Mr. Google. I was actually going to type Mr. there. <laughs> okay, so there you go. Um, I'm getting a ping request back. So that's uh, fantastic. Um, you know, and yum update minus y. See if there's any updates for our server. And I don't think there are. 
Oop, there, okay, so there aren't. Okay, so our server's up and running, so we're good. So what we need to do next is, let me show you how to set up those VPC flow logs. So I'm gonna actually set up the VPC flow logs only for this particular instance, only for the ENI attached to this instance, rather than the entire VPC as a whole, because I wanna try and illustrate a key feature uh, as quickly as possible. So when you click on networking, that's the public IP address, that's the private IP address. If you scroll a bit further down, this is the Elastic Network Interface attached to the server. So if you click on that, it will take you to the network interface summary for that interface, okay? And this is the network card, if you will, attached to the actual instance. And so if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you can create flow logs just for this network interface card, this Elastic Network Interface. So click Create Flow Log. Okay, so here's where you create the flow logs. So we'll give this a name. So something like management server logs, okay? And in fact, maybe we'll just say IP logs just so that we know exactly what it is. The, the filter, we're gonna set it to all, so both accepted and rejected traffic. The maximum aggregation interval, I'm gonna set it to 10 minutes, and we're gonna send that data to CloudWatch Logs. Now, we've got permissions to write to CloudWatch Logs, so we can create a log group from here itself, or if you already had an existing log group, you could select that. So I'm just gonna create a log here, MGMT server logs, something like that, okay? And this is where you select the IAM role created right at the beginning. So if I do a quick filter for, there it is, VPC flow logs CW, okay, for CloudWatch logs. You can leave everything else as it is and click create flow log. Okay, so it's successfully created the flow log and so we've got that flow log created. So if we scroll a bit further down, that's the actual flow log that is created, okay, and that destination is going to CloudWatch Logs, right. Now we need to try and generate some traffic. So we can go back to our instance, and let's just click over here, and maybe we can do a few more things, like I can ping Google again, okay, or maybe I can ping Microsoft, okay and so on and so forth. And we can play around with it and get some traffic going. Another thing that I wanna quickly show you is how we can actually try and connect to the server from my local machine and capture that information in our flow logs as well. So I'm gonna exit out of here very quickly. Now I'm running a Mac, but you can obviously do this on Windows or Linux as well. Now on Windows, you can probably use something like Telnet, which is a utility that you can use to check for open ports. Another one is NetConnect when you're using PowerShell or Nmap. On the Mac, you can use a tool known as NC or NetCat, which is a tool that also lets you check for open ports, okay? Okay, so I'm just gonna open the terminal window and try and connect to this server from my local machine. So let me just quickly grab the public IP address of this EC2 instance. So that's there, that one. Okay, and I'm gonna go into my terminal window. And in terminal, I can run a command called NC minus ZV paste in the public IP address of my server and check if port 22 is open. And it is, okay? So I can now connect to port 22. I know that port 22 is open on that server. What about port 80? Is port 80 open? Okay, it's not. Okay, so I'm just running what's known as a netcat command that allows me to check using this, using the switch hyphen ZV allows me to check if a particular port is open. Okay, so obviously that isn't open because that's just timing out. Uh, we'll try another one, maybe 443. No, that one isn't open either. Uh, 22 was open. Well, don't know what two is. Sorry, let's try 22 again. And yes, I'm able to connect on port 22. So you can see I'm generating some kind of traffic here. Okay, I'm able to connect on that port. But any other port, okay, 3389, which will never work because it's a Linux machine, not a Windows machine that I'm connecting to, but you get the idea. Okay, so I've generated some traffic. This traffic should be getting captured in those flow logs. Now, it takes a little bit of time. Obviously, it's going to aggregate every 10 minutes to capture all of that data. So I'm going to post the video over here and then take you into the CloudWatch console to show you those log files. Okay, so let's go ahead and check those CloudWatch logs now. So I'm gonna go back into my console and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into CloudWatch. Okay, so let's open that up in another tab. 
Okay, so this is CloudWatch. Now from the left hand menu, if you click the logs group, you will find that my log group was created. So AWS MGMT server logs. So let's go into that. And in there, you will see my log stream. So there's one log stream there. We can go into that now. And there is gonna be a list of entries of all the kind of IEP traffic that's been hitting that ENI or leaving that ENI, both inbound and outbound. And you will find that some of that traffic is accepted, some of it is rejected. Now, what I've done, obviously, is I've connected to the server a few times from my local machine by running that NC command, that netcat command. So I'm gonna do a quick search for that by searching for my public IP address in this list, and then I'll show you the results of that. So let me quickly do that. Okay, so I've just done a search for my public IP address, and obviously I've sort of obscured that so that I don't give out my public IP address, but you can see there's the one where I did a search on port 80, and that was rejected because port 80 is not open. There is the one that I did on port two when I intended to do port 22. If you remember, I accidentally typed in two and then press enter, mm -hmm. that got rejected as well. There is the one that I did port 22, which was successfully connected and that was accepted. There is another one that I did on port 3389, thinking it was a Windows machine, obviously not. I'm not gonna get remote desktop working on a Linux machine, so that was rejected as well. So hopefully you're beginning to get the idea that now I can tell this person has been trying to connect to this Linux server using port 3389. How silly of me. Okay, so hopefully you got the gist of how VPC flow logs work. So what we're gonna do next is we're just gonna tidy up, okay, uh, and get rid of stuff because we don't need this anymore. So I'm gonna go into the EC2 instance first. Let's get rid of that. Let's go back to our EC2 instances. Let's get rid of that management server. I don't want you incurring any unnecessary costs. So we'll get rid of that server, brilliant. That is shutting down, it will take a few seconds. Okay, so that is finally terminated. So let's just, okay, so that's good, that's gone. What we need to do next, obviously, is we can go into getting rid of those flow logs. So I'm gonna open CloudWatch logs again, go into CloudWatch logs. Because the instance is terminated, the network card that was associated was also terminated. So we can go into logs group. We don't need that one anymore. So I can go action, delete logs group. Great, that's gone as well. What about the IAM role? Let's clean that up as well. We don't need the IAM role anymore. So we'll delete that IAM role. Keep things in your account clean. Okay, this is also a security best practice, by the way. Okay. And then finally, we're gonna go into VPC and we're gonna go into the default VPC and go down to security groups and we're gonna get rid of that security group we created for the purposes of this exercise, which was the VPC flow log security group. So just select that action, delete security group, delete security group, and that's gone as well. Right, that brings us to the end of this video. I'll see you folks in the next. Thank you.